Welcome to another episode of Historical Churches, where in this video we will be visiting St Mary's Church in Whitby. A Norman church was built on the site around 1110 and added to and altered over the centuries. The tower and transepts are from the 12th and 13th centuries. The tower is square and crenellated, as are the walls. One of the oldest parts of the church is the choir, which has three round-headed windows at the east end. Its side walls originally had three bays with similar windows, but have been altered. When the church was enlarged in 1818, most of the north wall was removed and replaced by columns to accommodate an aisle. Four large square-headed windows were inserted on the south side. The south porch was built in 1823 and a north porch built in the new annex. The ceilings over the nave are boarded with several skylights. The transept was built in the 13th century and has three altered lancet windows in its northern arm while its southern arm is considerably changed and its windows all replaced. The nave and transept have 19th century galleries accessed by internal and external staircases and a three-decker pulpit which was installed in 1778 and altered in 1847. It retains its 18th century box pews, some of which are inscribed for strangers only. The north of the chancel arch is a Jacobean pew. The inside of the church is unique. The box pews make the church feel smaller and difficult to pass people as you walk around. There are a handful of objects and monuments to see and the Jacobean pew is a standout feature. The graveyard is well overgrown, which hides the many headstones. There are mowed paths to walk around, and these offer you a glimpse of a handful of headstones, which date from the early 19th century. On the west side of the churchyard, you'll find the impressive Camidon's Cross. It is widely believed that the grave of Dracula rests within the graveyard, but no such grave exists. The church was mentioned in Bram Stoker's novel, stating, For a moment or two I could see nothing, as the shadow of a cloud obscured St Mary's church. Then, as the cloud passed, I could see the ruins of the abbey coming into view, and as the edge of a narrow band of light, as sharp as a sword cut moved along, the church and churchyard became gradually visible. It seemed to me as though something dark stood between the seat where the white figure shone and bent over it. What it was, whether man or beast, I could not tell. St Mary's is a must visit when in Whitby, especially as it is next to the ruined abbey and offers you splendid views over Whitby.